Well, thanks everyone for coming to the Valentine booth. I'm actually not with Valentine. I'm with DeepMap here. And I'm going to use the next 10, 15 minutes to talk a little bit about how we use Valentine technology to, to help us do uh, HD mapping. All right, so a little bit about uh, DeepMap as a company. Um, we provide HD mapping as a service um, for autonomous vehicles and by autonomous vehicles. And I'll explain what that actually means. Uh, we were funded in 2016, so a little bit over uh, three and a half years ago. Um, our mission is to bring safe autonomy to the market faster, uh, quicker, and um, safer. We're very passionate about autonomy. We're focusing not only on level two, level two plus, all the way to level four, enabling full autonomy for a lot of customers. And we provide both HD mapping solution as well as localization services that can be directly embedded onto vehicles. And I'll have some videos to show later on. Um, a little bit about our funding team. Um, I'm, my name is Wei. I'm the COO and head of product at DeepMap. Our two founders, James Wu and Mark Wheeler, um, our CEO and a CTO, all three of us worked in Geo Solution for many years before funding uh, DeepMap. Um, we actually, all three of us worked at Google Maps, Google Earth, working on both consumer and enterprise solutions. Um, and then we took the leap in 2016 to start providing uh, mapping and localization services for autonomous vehicles. Uh, currently, our company is about 150 people. Uh, we have multiple offices in um, both US, China, and in Europe. Um, we have a lot of people coming from a lot of background. Uh, currently, we have raised over $95 million from a number of uh, both venture capitalists as well as strategic investors, as you can see here. Um, a quick view about where we are located. Our headquarters is based in Palo Alto, uh, in Silicon Valley. Um, we also have offices in China. Our he uh, China office headquarters is in Beijing, and we also have an operation center in Guangzhou. And we also have an office in Europe uh, in the process uh, being um, built up. And we operate globally. Just to give you examples, um, this is actually not a complete or most up-to-date map. We have mapped in US. We have mapped in um, Canada. We have mapped in multiple locations in Europe. Um, again, as I said, the map is not most up-to-date. And we also have mapped extensively in Asia as well, both in Japan as well as China. Um, here, we're highlighting a few customers. Um, we have a lot more, but these are the ones that we can publicly talk about. Um, we work in both uh, level uh, four space uh, for robo-taxi solutions, as well as trucking solutions. Um, and right, for instance, here is, that's an example of self-driving truck. Um, Mercedes, this is an announcement that we just made a few weeks back. Um, we're working with Mercedes to um, operate their robo taxi service in San Jose uh, Bay Area. And then we also work with a number of other OEMs and startups and other technology companies in various space of uh, autonomy. Some of these customers of ours are working on robo taxi, some of them are working on long haul trucking, some of them are working on delivery services. And actually, you know, uh, to my surprise today, if you look at this uh, iDriver Plus, um, cleaning robot. This is one of our customers in China as well. So um, anyhow, as a, we have a, a very diversified product offering portfolio. Uh, using Valentine LiDAR, we have built what we call a portable deep mapper or PDM for short. Here is just a screenshot of what it looks like. It's a highly mobile device that we pack into a suitcase. Um, in this particular picture, we're using the HDL32. Um, this is an older model, but we find it to be uh, quite robust and very um, provides very good resolution and precision. And we couple that with a very cheap RTK uh, device, and we use this portable device to map all around the world.
And this device is currently, uh, as I mentioned, deployed globally. We have um, these devices in, you know, in North America, of course, but also multiple locations in uh, Europe as well as Asia. For people who haven't heard about HD Map or doesn't know what HD Map is for, I'll just give a very quick introduction. Um, HD Map is essentially a database or a uh, layer that is used by the self-driving stack to do a couple of things. Number one, um, when, you're, when you have an HD map, this HD map is oftentimes used as part of the perception system output to help the perception system to figure out what are the existing objects um, that you already know in the environment so that the perception system does not have to figure out or compute in real time where things are, for instance, traffic lights, uh, where the lane lines are, where the intersections are, where the crosswalks are. From the map, you can simply look this up. And if your map is highly accurate and it tells you where exactly the traffic lights are, then the perception system's job becomes a lot easier. It will simply zoom into that traffic light and then just compute the state of that traffic light. Is it green? Is it red? Is the left uh, turn arrow on and off? it drastically reduces the computation needs for a perception system if you have a very precise map. On prediction, this is very simple. All the HD map, uh, HD map carries a lot of information about, or actually all the information, a self-driving car needs to uh, understand the traffic rules um, and what behavior it should do. So that helps the pr uh, prediction as well as the planning horizon to make decisions ahead of the time so that you don't have to um, do a lot of uh, real-time computation and guesses uh, right at a spot. And this is um, kind of a good example of how a very high quality hardware sensor is very, very critical. So if there is any error in the measurement of the hardware sensor itself, um, all these, um, just as I mentioned, all these errors will add up. And particularly in a tunnel environment, because you will lose GPS signal, the IMU will also start drifting like crazy. So all the information you have left to help you register the location of the vehicle comes down to the hardware, this, you know, the Valentine LiDAR itself. Obviously, on our side, we have developed a lot of the um, intelligence in our own localization module to accommodate all the drifts in IMU and the loss of GPS but we heavily have to depend on a high quality hardware in order for us to register vehicle um, very precisely. And this is a critical use case for a lot of level two, level two plus um, solutions, because oftentimes people see that the car will lose its location the moment it gets into the tunnel, and then the longer the tunnel is, the harder it is for it to register its location back once it come out of the tunnel. So that's the, actually the end of my presentation. Um, one thing to, to add before we wrap this thing up is that you know, as a HD mapping and a localization service provider, um, we believe that you know, obviously uh, HD mapping and localization is very, very critical. It's oftentimes the very first step that any self-driving company needs to, um, needs to take on before they can deploy any technology out there. Before you can have a self-driving car, you first need to map the environment you first need to register your vehicle into the environment. Um, DeepMap is a leader in this space. Um, we have worked with a lot of the, um, uh, not only the hardware providers, but as well as the uh, ecosystem players. Uh, this is an area that uh, we are fastly growing. Uh, so if you have you know, a self-driving technology or a service that you want to deploy, um, you can contact us um, from our website. And also, you know, you're welcome to talk to me afterwards as well. So thank you. What's the extra cost to include this in an automobile in addition to all the other location systems? Yeah, it's an excellent question. So the question is, like, how much does it cost? <laughs> so I'm, you know, here we're not, like, disclosing our public price. But it's fair to say that um, the... The role of HD map is very much similar to another type of sensor that you would need to install on the car. Now, depending on what level of autonomy that you want to enable, like level two, level two plus, level three, and level four are all different. For the higher level of autonomy, 
the HD map needs to be very sophisticated and needs to be constantly updated. So the cost over there is higher. For level two deployment, the maps are m a lot simpler and then the update requirement is not as frequent. So the cost is also a lot lower. It's, it's, there is a range to it. Can you attach the device in the lowest level to a, a regular size car now? <laughs> yeah, so the question is, can we actually attach the device to a regular size car? Um, the answer is kind of, you know, yes and no. Because the, actually, can you go back to show the uh, mapping rig that um, we built? So this rig, as I mentioned, is actually pretty small. It's um, uh, designed to be mounted on any consumer car. We literally, when we map, we pack this into a suitcase. Once we get to our destination, we just rent any regular consumer car and then we put it on the rooftop. Um, but I don't think many people want to see this thing on their own car today. <laughs> um, so this is still kind of designed for you know mapping application or self-driving application. On the other hand, um, our the cars that we see in the consumer market are getting increasingly more sophisticated. There are more cars coming out with you know, smart sensors, including cameras, including radar. And then uh, there are also uh, cars that are coming out that have uh, low resolution or better resolution, uh, starting from low resolution, but increasingly higher resolution LiDAR devices as well. So I think you know, if we're projecting forward, uh, it's, it's very, um, um, it's, 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 it's possible that the cars that consumers will own in the future will either play a role of map creation and also a map update as well. So that's, that's coming, I think. Question is, how long does it take to create a city? So obviously, it depends on the size of the city. Um, another factor to consider is what type of maps that you're using, uh, you're creating. Like as I mentioned, level two map versus level four maps are very, very different. For the very low res, or not, I shouldn't say low res, for very simple maps, uh, say for a level two application, our process is actually very automated. So if, without counting the time it needs to do the collection, this can be done in a matter of weeks. Now, if you have a very compli complicated level four map, and the level four map oftentimes needs to be actually customized as well to integrate with the perception system, the planning horizon, the prediction modules and whatnot, that can take a lot longer, um, not only from the map production operation side, but more on the integration and the customization side. 